live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone, live here in Las Vegas for AWS Amazon Web Services reInvent 2018 CUBE coverage. We've got two sets here, three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. My co-host Dave Vellante, Dave, six years. Man, so much yeah. action going on. <laughs> Unbelievable. A little few more people here than there were in 2013. <laughs> it's almost as big as VMworld. VMworld. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest, Mark Lohmeyer, Senior Vice President, General Manager of the Cloud Platform Business Unit uh, from VMware, Cube alumni. Welcome back, good to see you. Right. yeah, thanks to be here, thanks guys. Thanks for coming on, yeah. Mark. So, like, joking aside around VMware, VMworld, yeah. it, this is a partnership that you have that's deep and meaningful, and it's been two years with yeah, that yeah. Ragu and Sanjay and you guys did the deal with, with uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. both <laughs> are involved, mm -hmm. Pat and Andy. Now with the cloud announcement on premises, yeah, yeah. you have Outpost, which is two versions, right. one with the VMware component and one with right. the Amazon stack. Right, right. And it's a hardware device. It's an <laughs> appliance. <laughs> Did hell just freeze over? <laughs> What's going on? Tell us about the announcement yeah, yeah, absolutely. and your role. So, um, you know, um, so I think the first thing that's kind of interesting about this is it really is from my perspective and I think both companies' perspective, the next big phase of the expansion of the partnership between the two companies, right? And um, you know, from the very beginning, I think we've tried to be very customer focused and very customer driven. And if you think about what we did in the first phase, right? We took the core VMware set of enterprise class capabilities and delivered them on the AWS public cloud been going great, great customer tra traction, reaction. We're rolling that service out around the globe as you heard from uh, Pat and Andy this morning. So you know, that's been, been incredible, right? And then uh, two months ago at VMware, uh, VMworld, uh, we announced um, a new dimension to the partnership which was bringing AWS services back onto VMware on-prem. Yeah, right? that's so RDS, that's RDS. RDS, yeah. RDS, absolutely. And uh, you know, we, we felt pretty positive about that, but to be honest, the customer feedback to that in terms of the level of positivity, it yeah. even took us by surprise. Right? I don't want to toot our own horn, but we like to sometimes do humble, humble brags on theCUBE, Dave. <laughs> uh, actually, oh. all, actually all the time. Yeah. Um, but we called this, we predicted yeah. that the, the world would uh, polarize into two main personas, mm -hmm. developers mm -hmm. and operators. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all the successful large scale things, right. Right. Google is a great example, they got SREs, site reliability engineers, basically operators, right. and then developers. So right. this is, you guys own the operator market, Absolutely. enterprise. Right. So talk about this persona. I think yeah. this is now legitimized and it's changing yeah. the jobs of people on premises because the holy trinity of infrastructure, storage, networking, can compute, yeah, yeah. that's never going away, it's right. changing. Right, right. The changing is causing a ripple effect. Can yeah, you explain no, that? No, absolutely, right? So I think one thing we see from virtually all the customers we talk to is you've got this core IT operations team that um, has this set of uh, skill sets, experiences that they've built up in their own data centers, right? And um, what they're hearing from the business though and the developers and everyone else is we want to have the flexibility to develop apps, deploy apps, run apps, wherever the business needs. Sometimes that'll be in the public cloud, sometimes that'll be in the data center, sometimes that'll be in the edge. Sometimes you have applications that actually span those different environments. But back on the IT side, you don't want to have different tools in each of those three different scenarios. You want to have a common infrastructure across those. And so that's one of the key sort of driving motivations behind the VMware strategy. And I think you're really sort of seeing that brought to life in the context of the partnership with, uh, with AWS. So the other thing that we called, we said that, that AWS is going to have to go after hybrid uh, because it's just too big of a market. Mm. Customers want it, yeah. they're customer yeah. focused. So yeah. now you see Outpost, which is AWS hardware. They emphasize it's the same exact mm. hardware that mm. they use in their data center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk about that a little bit, what your, sure. what your role is there. Sure. I mean, you're a software company, so you're like, great. Yeah. But, you know, we want to run on anyone's hardware, right, right. beautiful, so. Right, right. Yeah, so you know, as Andy announced, uh, AWS Outposts uh, is an incredibly compelling concept, right? And it's this idea that AWS is delivering compute and racks of AWS compute and storage into the data center. It's based on AWS designed hardware. In fact, the exact same AWS designed hardware that they run in their own public cloud. And then it gives customers the same APIs and control plane that they can take advantage of in the public cloud. So, um, you know, that's a very attractive sort of uh, proposition. Now, if you sort of look at VMware, right, and where our partnership with AWS comes into this equation, um, what we're doing with them is we're effectively enabling uh, two variants of uh, solutions on top of AWS Outpost. Um, the first variant uh, we call VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts. And uh, the way to think about this is it's effectively exactly what we did with them and built with them 
with VMware Cloud and AWS in the public cloud, but now we're bringing that same thing back on-prem. So it gives customers in their data center the full cloud experience. Uh, we manage the life cycle of the software for them. We're responsible for the SLA. You can scale the capacity up and down seamlessly. All those same benefits of VMware Cloud on AWS, now on-prem. So we think this is going to be uh, transformative for the data center, right? You think about being able to get the data center operators out of having to worry about the life cycle of either the hardware or the VMware software on top is going to be huge. This, and, yeah. and, okay, so that's, that's, that's both. That's variant one, yeah, right? So that's variant, variant one. Yeah. The VMware version. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's VMware Cloud and AWS, kind of the first, uh, on uh, AWS Outpost, the first variant. Yeah. Um, by the way, just to wrap up on that one, we think that one's going to be particularly compelling to customers who have standardized on vSphere in their data center, right? Because it's the same vSphere Operate, stack, yeah. so everything's the same. So um, we're really excited about that and the opportunity that represents for, for customers yeah. and for us and for AWS. The uh, second variant uh, is uh, VMware Cloud Foundation for EC2 on AWS Outposts. So the way to think about this is, if you're a customer who has built your application on top of native EC2, right, native AWS services, yeah. and now you want to extend that application into the data center, maybe the edge, for very specific use cases. Maybe it's low latency, maybe it's a manufacturing floor, maybe it's video processing close to the edge, right? You want to extend that same infrastructure you know, into the data center. Um, you're obviously going to want to continue to run those workloads on EC2, um, but also then these new requirements emerge when that's plunked down in the data center, right? And the people that are operating that, they're going to want to have a consistent network model that spans everything else in their data center and now this new outpost environment. They're going to want to have a consistent security model, et cetera. And so what we've done with VMware Cloud Foundation for EC2 on outposts is um, brought those VMware enterprise class capabilities around networking and security and storage to that environment. So the question is, can I get serverless with, with um, Outpost? So, um, so AWS's plan is to enable um, the vast majority of their native services that they are, make available in the public cloud on top of AWS Outpost on-prem. I don't know specifically on serverless, but let's, that would be let's, totally let's part talk of their security. Yeah. I have a security question yeah. for you. So you guys are in the virtual machine business, so yeah. with Lambda and, and EC2 yeah. compute, yeah. I can run VMware under the covers yes. and put a security model around containers yeah. and maybe um, take away uh, the ability to manage Kubernetes clusters. Yeah, yeah. So what, how do you see that? Absolutely, so I think one of the interesting things about this uh, solution we're creating with them is uh, clearly it will be able to support Kubernetes applications running on top of it, both, both variants. Um, but now you think about, to your point, security, networking, and management, how do you handle those things? And so that's an area where we think we can bring a lot of value to bear. One example of this is NSX, right? So customers use NSX to secure their workloads on-prem today, do micro-segmentation, secure networking traffic. We're bringing the full power of NSX to both of those variants. So now customers can have a single networking software layer and, and networking security that spans everything they've already got in their data center plus these new outpost environments. So it's a, it's a great example and particularly, I think it's going to be particularly relevant as they start deploying applications in Kubernetes so on top of So several years ago, we coined the term true private cloud, which yeah. is on-prem infrastructure that substantially tries to mimic the public cloud experience. Right. right. Of course, <laughs> what was missing out of that was really the public cloud, right. true public cloud. Right. Now you had Azure Stack and, and certainly Oracle's got yeah. some, some action, but this totally redefines that space. Maybe it's true hybrid well, cloud. Well, we got to change and the title because actually it's cloud. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. No, yeah, I think that's the way, I mean, to me, I love that way of thinking about it, right? right? Which is the distinction between private cloud and public cloud has now Goes completely away. gone away, okay. right? Absolutely. There's one cloud. The data center's really just consistent. a large edge. Yeah, well, yeah, a, yeah, a really large edge. And what yeah. we always really said, is, well, we said <laughs> true private cloud is like, it's like cable ready. It's going to be hybrid ready. Well, <laughs> yeah. now it's ready. Yeah, absolutely. So, big, big yeah. game changer. All right, I got to ask you some questions around competition and landscape because if this trend continues, um, you're going to see new kinds of companies emerge out of, mm -hmm. out of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, uh, AJ talked about the ecosystem evolving to be more yeah. service provider oriented. Yeah. It used to be back in the tech days, if you remember just a few short years ago, <laughs> that when you got venture funding, you had to build a platform. Right. Build moats. Jerry Chen talks about moats and mm -hmm. competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Build a platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if Amazon and VMware are now a platform, right. I can actually start a business and have a nice, potential big business Absolutely. by leveraging that as a platform Absolutely. and competing against big companies. Like for instance, I'll just throw one out there. Yeah. ServiceNow. Yeah. I decide I'm going to compete with ServiceNow. I'm mm. going to be the best mm. IT operations, mm. ITIL, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to have to build all the stuff they have. I'm just going right. to go pick right. the one thing I want to differentiate on. Yeah. I could do that. 
this is going to change the landscape. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, you think about this platform we're creating together between AWS and VMware, it's got the richest set of capabilities, services, et cetera, that anyone can take advantage on top of it, right? And so now if you're a technology vendor, this becomes the platform that you want to write to, right? And um, you know, if you look at the VMware uh, DNA, right, back from the early days, I think we've done a pretty good job about always embracing the ecosystem, right? Em embracing the technology vendors, the ISVs. AWS has done a tremendous job of this as well. And so I think, from my perspective, it's a great opportunity for that next startup that wants yeah. to build the next great service that, to, to layer on top really of this. That's really interesting. I mean, you mentioned service now, Salesforce another one. Somebody's still going to write the app. But those guys, both of those guys are increasingly putting stuff on, on I Amazon. I mean, I use search now because they're big and successful. No, but it's a really good, it's a good thought exercise is how, how does that evolve? Yeah. Well, I bring yeah. it up because if you're vulnerable, yeah. if you're out in the Serengeti, uh, <laughs> wandering, <laughs> your head's down, yeah. you're going to get, you could get taken out. Yeah. So it keeps everyone on their toes yeah. to create value. So it, it creates more of a level playing field, right? I think it makes it easier for new entrants to it, come in and yeah, differentiate level themselves, up. right? Yeah. You, can, you use the platform, yeah. so yeah. buy or build, level up. Absolutely. So it certainly changes the investment strategy. We're going to pepper Jerry Chen on that when he comes on yeah. uh, about that, that <laughs> sure. question. Sure. Um, what else is, is happening with the announcement? What other things that people don't know about or conversation you've been involved in that you'd like to share about Outpost? Um, you know, so I think, you know, it's, it's early obviously, we just announced it this morning, so we're still sort of getting the reactions, but so far from, you know, customers and analysts I've talked to, um, it's resonating really strongly, right? And it's this, it's this idea of, hey, public-private cloud distinction has gone away. There's now just sort of one cloud, there's this one platform that I can leverage across data center, you know, cloud and edge. Um, and uh, so we're really looking forward over the next year to executing and delivering this with AWS. Every customer I talked to yesterday and the day before at the analyst event, basically said, look, I've got, I don't know, whatever, 30, 40, 50% of my workloads are, are technical debt, I'm right. not moving them. Right. When we asked, are you right. interested in this? Yeah. Every one of them, it, yeah, of yeah. course we're interested in this. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what we wanted. Right. Well, so here's an, another interesting thing I heard from someone, which I, to me captured the essence of it, which is they said, hey, you know, 70% uh, of my workloads are in my data center, 30% are in the cloud. But the cloud has this as a service model, this flexible consumption model, all these things that are so compelling. Yeah. What you're doing with this is you're bringing all the things I love about the public cloud consumption model to the heart of where all my workloads are actually running today. Right, and so that to me was an interesting way I thought to capture a little bit of the value we're able yeah. to deliver to customers. And what we cover, this is going to be big news, it's going to continue to go. Yep. Hybrid cloud is now validated. You guys have done a great job helping AWS become more enterprise um, capable and scaling. Yeah. They're helping you with Two developers. Two way street. Um, it's a great partnership. But I think yep. it points to co creation, co opetition. Anytime you have co creation and co opetition, mm -hmm. it's a rising tide. So it's Absolutely. a great market. It's a good time to be in the business, congratulations. Great. Yes, thank you. Great news coming out of uh, AWS reInvent, obviously hybrid cloud, on-premise, stuff that we thought would never happen years ago. Your <laughs> quote, Dave, today's article on siliconangle.com. Stay with us for more breaking coverage. Jerry Chen coming up next from Greylock is going to break it down for us in a special analyst segment with Jerry Chen next. Stay with us.